there's this guy that I know in the gym and <laughs> the way I met him, it's so funny because he was like doing rows or something. And I, I looked at him I was like, this guy is not training hard at all. It feels like he's just going through the motions and not really getting any benefit out of it. And you look at this guy's physique, you would think, well, he probably hasn't even ever lifted. I was mistaken. I go up to him and instead of introducing myself, whatnot, I say, push harder, keep going. All right, he reached failure. I said, rest, count down from 10 in your head. He counted down from 10 and then he kept going. And then I said, keep going. Then I said, then he reached failure. I ripped off the 25s. I said, keep going. I placed my hands on his lats. I said, feel the connection right there. This guy's like, what the fuck? This dude just came up to me. He didn't say anything because I was just like a million times more jacked than he was. And this is sort of the reputation I have in my gym that people know that I know more because I've built that reputation and they've seen me coach people who've asked it. So the unsolicited advice just comes sometimes and they don't really mind. And anyways, this guy like starts to think that we're friends or whatever. I was just trying to teach him to not be a pussy because this guy is Indian. I'm Indian too. In my head, this guy is giving my people a bad name because he looks like shit. <laughs> I mean, not only does he not know how to lift and look terrible, but it seems like he doesn't brush his teeth and he smells bad. It's like every time this guy comes up to me, I'm just like, bro, can you not? Just please get away. But a part of me wants to help him because he's been going to the gym for so long, for two years. And he looks terrible. I didn't look like Top G Chad after two years, but I had made some progress. And it's important to find the constraint of where you're at when you've been doing something for so long and you haven't made any progress towards your goals. The first thing that comes to mind when, when people are going to the gym for years and years and they aren't making progress is that they just don't lift frequently enough. For this guy in the story, that wasn't the case because he's in the gym four days a week. But a lot of you who aren't making the progress aren't training the muscle groups frequently enough. What that means is you might be on a typical bodybuilder split the, or the bro split, which goes chest, then shoulders, then arms, then legs, then back. It's a five day split. And the way that works out is that now you've only hit each muscle group one time per week. Now there's a study here from 2016 called, and I'm going to read this, called the effects of resistance training frequency on measures of muscle hypertrophy, a systematic review and meta-analysis. Now I read the whole paper and basically you really don't need to read it. The main point of the paper is that training muscle groups one, one, only one time per week is not efficient enough. You are leaving gains on the table if you are not training at least twice per week. And that doesn't mean going to the gym twice per week means training each muscle group twice per week, which is why I recommend to most people who are getting into the gym to do either a full body split three times per week or to do upper lower, where you hit your entire upper body, then your entire lower body, rest, upper body, lower body, rest. This allows you to hit each muscle group two times per week to be in the optimal hypertrophy range. Even if you are hitting the optimal 10 to 20 sets in that one time per week, you're still leaving gains on the table. And let me explain why. Think about this in terms of like the Minecraft hunger bar. Each time you go to the gym, you have full 10 like turkey legs or whatever. You're full 10 on power. And as you go set to set, you, you start to lose turkey legs. You go less and less. After your first few sets, you're at an eight, then you're at a six, then you're at a four. And by the time you're at set number eight, you have one turkey leg left. Thinking on that analogy, do you think you're going to be making as much gains as if you had 10 turkey legs? Because the less and less power that you have in your gym power meter, the less gains your body is going to be able to handle. So it's very important to be able to get those 10 to 20 sets over two separate sessions because you're going to have you're going to have more sets when you're at a higher power level and you're going to be able to create more progress because of it. This introduces the concept of the stimulus to fatigue ratio. 
it essentially means that if your power level is too low, the XP you're gaining versus the damage you're taking is not good. You're taking more damage and you're getting less XP. So in order to get XP higher than damage, your power level needs to be at a 10 out of 10 for most of the time. And the way you do that is by splitting it up into two sessions. Another reason that you might not be making gains is that you're prioritizing isolation movements too early in your gym journey. There becomes a time where isolation are a really, really good tool to cap off your physique. But in the first two to five years, you really need to be prioritizing the six compound movements, the squat, bench, deadlift, overhead press, pull up, and barbell row. These six movements are going to build 65 to 80% of your physique. If I simply started doing the rear delt cable fly and the pec deck and the leg extension, I'm not going to be making as much gains as if I did bench press, barbell rows, and squats. Your body needs the stimulus. Because when you are earlier in your gym journey, your power meter stays higher for longer and you take less damage. And as you get more advanced, you start to take more damage from these compound movements, which means you need to take advantage of the period where you take less damage and you gain more XP. Think of it as like a double XP weekend for five years. Another reason you might not be making the progress that you want is that you're not training close enough to failure. Notice how I didn't say to failure. You don't need to train completely to failure to make gains, but you need to train really damn close. A study from 2019 titled Muscle Failure Promotes Greater Muscle Hypertrophy in Low Load But Not High Load Resistance Training. I'll break it down. Within the first two to five years of your lifting journey, if you were in a rep range of more than eight to 10 reps, you should be training to complete failure. If you're doing a really heavy set of three to five reps, you should be training one to two reps away from failure. It's not that much of a difference. I can almost guarantee that most of you aren't training at this area because doing one rep away from failure on a squat feels like death. <laughs> like this is a very, very hard movement. One rep away from failure on deadlift is very difficult. Most people are stopping three to five reps away from failure and wondering why they're not making as much progress as their buddy is. Because their buddy is the gym bro idiot who's training to failure on every single set of every exercise. He's training to complete failure, he's getting more damage. But the XP he's getting is way higher than you. Yeah, you're taking less damage, but your XP is in the gutter. So your gym bro friend who's in newbie gains is able to sustain that damage because he's going to failure and he's getting double XP. Going to the gym is almost like getting that diamond camo in Call of Duty. When I was in sixth grade, I would play Call of Duty Black Ops 2. And I would grind to get the gold camos in each of the categories. And once you get all of the gold camos, you get the diamond camo. The way it works is that you would need to get like 100 headshots and then like 100 kills while crouching and then 100 while prone and 100 while doing a 360 or whatever. You had to do 100, 200, 300 of all different kinds of kills with that weapon. Going to the gym is the exact same thing. It's not just one or two things that you do correctly. There's five or six things that you need to do correctly simultaneously and that is what will give you the result. It's going to the gym and training one rep away from failure or at failure. It's training each muscle group at least twice a week. It's doing your optimal range of 10 to 20 sets. It's prioritizing the six compound movements in your first two to five years. All of these things together build a really, really good foundational physique. It's what allows you to take advantage of the newbie gains while you're still in that phase. And you're not wondering 10 years down the line while you're still fat and ugly. Imagine where you could be if you simply implemented all of these things today. A year down the line, 100, 200 workouts later, what kind of physique are you going to have? What levels of confidence you're going to be? Imagine the confidence you're going to have. You're going to be able to go up and talk to anyone. You're going to feel proud of your physique. You're going to have the attraction and the status and people will perceive you to be better. Aren't these all things that you want? If you're an athlete, you're going to be able to dominate people on the pitch because you have built the athleticism and the strength and the power that comes with implementing these practices.
If you want to be a bodybuilder, you're going to accelerate that time so you can actually get onto the stage. But if you don't do this, you're going to stay like the guy I described in the beginning. With a shitty physique, with saggy man titties, and wide love handles, and looks like he doesn't even lift even though he's been in the gym for two and a half years. And he doesn't have the social skills because he, all he does is talk to weird people who are at the same low status as him. So those are the two options. You can either be the guy who lifts for years and years and gets no results, or you can spend the next two, 300 workouts working to become a Chad, slowly raising your status, slowly increasing your physique, increasing your athletic ability until you get to the point where you want to be. And all it takes is taking these five steps that I've outlined for you, envisioning the outcome of where you're going to be, and then implementing it on a day-to-day basis. If you see yourself at 2.0 version, you will make it. But if you're focused on the problems that you're experiencing on a day-to-day basis, you will fall off. Because your progress is fueled by anxiety at that point. But if you focus yourself on the outcome, you will adopt a growth mindset and simply adopt the principles that I'm telling you today and you will achieve. It's guaranteed. It might take 600 workouts, but the guy who did the same 600 workouts and only hit the muscle group once per week will be behind. While you hit the muscle groups twice per week and now you're ahead of the game and you have twice the physique that he does. Subscribe now for more tips because fitness and self-improvement is a lifelong journey. I'm committed to throwing myself into the fire to learn these things and then pass them on to you. Because I'm going to the promised land and I want to bring as many guys with me as possible. Because what's cooler than all of us becoming jacked absolute chads together? Achieving the lives that we want.